you actually find something that is your home, it's so empowering and it just makes me want to grow more, learn more, uh, and just be more of a service to others. Fong Lu moved into Australia's biggest public housing estate just over two years ago. He was unable to work at the time. A private rental was out of reach. It's very expensive at, at that time. Um, and, you know, for me, not having any working, not having any money, um, I wasn't really able to even afford, you know, to, to go and privately rent. When the application came through, it was like, yes, I can finally, you know, feel like I have a safe place. I can then start to look for, you know, work and just begin on working on my health as well. Fong's inner city Sydney unit is now his dream home, but he'll have to move. The New South Wales government will sell Waterloo Estate to private developers. None of the 2,500 people who live here know exactly where or when they'll be going. There's no information that, yes, we, you know, if you are here, then you're able to come back. Um, and I think that that's one of the big issues that, that, that the tenants, myself, want to know, because we want a place where we can, you know, be safe and not have to move and then not come back. Given what I was in before, I wouldn't give this up for the world. All they really need to do is renovate these places. Don't knock them down, just renovate them. Homes on this massive estate were built between the 1960s and 90s, even earning a royal visit. The unveiling of the park commemorated the housing project, which was completed late last year. The government's plans for the site were announced in 2015 to coincide with a new station for Sydney's upcoming metro train line. Sydney Metro now includes a preferred station at Waterloo, bringing world-class metro rail to Waterloo. It's been a years-long and bitterly fought process. Private developers have now partnered with community housing providers to bid to redevelop the south end of the estate. Whoever wins the tender will eventually build more than 3,000 new homes, many of them private. The net gain of public housing that will be retained on that particular area of the site is about 100. And that's 100 over a number of years and stages, so, so not, not big numbers by any stretch of the imagination, and certainly not anywhere what we would suggest is deserving and possible of a site like that. Waterloo's renewal is part of a $22 billion state government initiative called Communities Plus. The model will be rolled out at more than 10 sites, including Waterloo. Communities Plus allows developers to purchase public land on the condition 30% of their project is dedicated social housing. New South Wales by about 2025 won't have increased um, social housing by even a thousand dwellings. Um, over that same period, Victoria, Victoria is doing 8,000 dwellings. Even small states like Tasmania, that's got about 7% of New South Wales population, is, is got an aspiration of trying to do 1,000 new dwellings every year. So they've just got to invest. In response to questions from 7.30, the Land and Housing Corporation revealed it wouldn't meet its own Communities Plus target of 23,000 new public housing properties by 2026. So far, just over 2,700 homes have been completed. Meanwhile, more than 51,000 households are on the wait list. In inner city Sydney, it's a five to 10 year wait for a home. It's never too late to come back with a bit of innovation and look at things through fresh eyes. And so we certainly hope that in the case of whoever wins government in New South Wales in March, leans in, looks at the, the policy that is uh, Waterloo in the inner city and, and our approach to housing, and, and looks at it through those fresh eyes and, and comes up with a, with a more of an exemplar uh, opportunity or something that we can all be proud of rather than uh, say that's the best we could do. These are all just family. I, I talk to them sometimes, but they live in all over Australia. Some live in Orange, some live in Queensland. Some... Olivia Bright has lived in Waterloo Estate for decades. The government is yet to announce its plans for her end of the site but she's still thinking about what she'll take when it's time to leave. 
Candles you can buy in anywhere and any time, but, but photos and things like that I take with me, you know. But you don't want to go? No, I don't. Yeah, when they take me, they can take me out in a bag. Are you going to come up? All the time. <laughs> Her friend, Luna Farrell, has lived in the estate for about two years. I do see why it is important for the redevelopment to go ahead because it's progress and we all know what happens when people try to stop progress. In a statement, State Homes Minister Anthony Roberts said a returned Liberal government would continue with the model of mixed public and private development. The state opposition has pledged to review all Communities Plus projects. You really need to invest more in social housing. Sydney's the most expensive city in, a, in, a, in Australia. You really need to take the pressure off the housing market by helping people in need and give them a, a, a decent place to live. There's always been a stigma around public housing. I even was part of that, judging, you know, this area. But until I actually moved back here, I went, wow, you know, my perspective of the Waterloo community is completely different. That's what we need to really focus on, to understand the people in public housing, we're human beings as well.